Grown black folks talk on letting fools go one by one. It's sort of a story time, although I'm not going to get into the details because what I don't do is I don't do subliminals. I don't care if the people involved ever hear me because I'm not going to let it so they in, they're going to identify themselves per se, but I will use things as a teaching tool. Here's something that many of you don't know about me. I lurk on a lot of channels. Uh, I can find out what's going on. You, you got a Facebook, you got an Instagram. I'm a trained investigator. Uh, I'm a professional journalist. So I'm finding what's going on if I get ready to do it. I lurk in a lot of places. I'm not seen there. I'm just there, you know, paying attention, building a profile half the time. I took my time coming out against Anton Daniels and Adagon Forrest and Cynthia G for that reason. I took my time, got things together, determined how I wanted to talk about it, got the clip that I wanted of Anton Daniels. Um, I did not put up the clip of Adagon Forrest because he was his YouTube and his YouTube are small, and we're not trying to have it get bigger. That just needed to be reported and shut down. Cynthia G, we all know Cynthia G. She has an established channel. And like I said, people, black women that want to be conned like that will be conned like that. The thing I can do about it, except shout the warning. But hey, whatever it is you're doing, I can find out if it's on social media. Social media is publicly facing. But what people do on social media from day to day is build cases against themselves. I give you the case of Mr. Donald John Trump who may get jacked up and put in jail for the first time next week because he is allowing himself to get online and start putting out threats against people. And he's finally found a judge that just isn't feeling like that. As, as Congress would love to tell you, here comes another black woman about to do what all these other people are too weak to do and be like, uh, sir, no, I'm not giving you extra days. You got this much time to respond, get your former presidential behind in here and answer to this because you are not above the law. You just another American citizen. No. Just like the Honorable Cheryl L. Jo Cheryl L. Johnson had to hold up the House of Representatives because then Republicans didn't know how to put a speaker in there to save their life for two weeks. It always falls back on Black women. and But unfortunately, this is just part of the nature. When Black women were brought to America, we were brought here to save the capital of America. Look it up. As long as the slave trade was going on, mostly Black men were imported. And they went on, uh, that was about 160, 170 years, or almost, there was a certain amount of Black women house servants that were put in. There were a certain amount of Black women who were brought in here to be pimped before that, because we know the first pimp was, one of the first pimps at least, was a Black man who was engaged by white men to show off Black women in slavery so they could take their pick. 1737. Y'all can look that up. And they let him dress fine and have more privileges for doing this with, with, with Black women uh, tied up and showed off with their assets out. 1737. So there were certain Black women who were sexually trafficked and there were Black women who were house servants and sometimes that became the same thing. But in mass, what was going on with slave trade about to be ended, we had to, our ancestresses had to come in and breed the next generation of slaves. And this is how we went from being uh, just 1 million slaves at about 1800 to 4 million slaves by 1865 to 16 million Black people by the time Booker T. Washington wrote about it. Black women did that because we birthed all the additional. This is also why people talk about reparations to be for Black men only. No, the Black men that came before Black women were mass imported, because again, those black because before there was a need for it, those black women, those black men were not allowed to have sex with black women. That, no, they were there to be worked to death. Seven years into adulthood, 25 rotations into the ground. There were several attempts to be fair, but nobody really got any traction until Nat Turner. And apparently what happened with Nat Turner was that happened because why? What happened to his own wife and children? Plus, reading the Bible for himself and realizing as a slave preacher, he'd been lied to. Combination. That's an interesting story. But before 1831, which is when the mass importation of Black women was up and popping, nope, no Black man group alone succeeded. Anywhere near succeeded. It's just a fact, y'all. I'm sorry. 
Now, Hades' story is a little bit different because it was a couple of uh, female deities there that inspired everybody to get up and do something. Y'all look up Ezeli Danto. So again, y'all want to really learn about this, I want you to go listen to Transmuted Living and listen to Confidence with Love. And they will give you a whole bunch of history about how Black women succeeded in fighting back when others didn't. Africa is a really interesting story. Amani Rinos of Kush, Queen, Her Majesty, is why the Kushites, the Ethiopians of that time, were not conquered. Menelik II would come along 1,800 years later and pull off the same feat. Honor to both of them, His Majesty Menelik II, honor to both of them, but, uh, sir, you 1,800 years late. The Romans would have taken everything that, that Kush had. Hannibal over in Carthage found that out. He did the best he could. 20 years of work. We're not, we're not, we're not taking that from his majesty Hannibal. He did the very best he could. But he failed. Amani Rinas did not. Nazinga held off things as long as she could. And it was betrayed, the country was betrayed by her son. Y'all, y'all listen to Transmuted Living in Confidence with Love and find out a few things. So then you come on down to. Black women have been in this position of having to hold things up. And see, what's different today is Black women are like, no, get your life together or get out. And you take somebody like Stephanie Perry, a daily abortion, shot a picky girl shot from the world, uh, Rashida Dow, uh, she is on the loose, and people in the Exodus Network are basically saying, America, you're not going to get it together back. You will not have our labor. You will not have our presence. You will not have our brilliance. No. Bye. Marissa Price, the newer channel that I've been watching, is coming along saying, corporate America, uh, you going to mistreat them. Bye. And Black men are struggling with this reality that they cannot just expect us to do what was expected in the 1950s. Black women had to go work and hold up everything at the house. Whether or not, now again, not all Black men were uh, were weak. Not all black men were useless. Not all black men were abusive. That does need to be said. Not all black men had three families, four families. Not all black men were trying to play pimp like in 1737. That's not, not all black men. Never has been, and I don't expect it ever will be. But there's enough for black women to be saying enough. And so what I find myself in the process of doing is letting people convict themselves one by one. There's a lot to be said, ladies, for moving in silence and just observing what people do. Because their social media will tell you a lot of things. There's a website called Spokeo.com, too, where you're going to be able to go up and put people's names in. And they'll let you put the name in there for free and find out if there's court records you need to know about. Now, you're going to have to pay for that report. But at least you can get a sense of what you're dealing with. But it has been my unpleasant... There was an incident that happened in July, and I remember thinking to myself, okay, wait, what? Where is this coming from? Time to investigate. So I'll just be rolling down through people's social media till I found an incident and a comment that expose the base disrespect, hatred, and even violent ideations. I'm like, oh, you starting to act out with me. Noted. That's the beginning of the case. He's just going to get built from there. The play, but the point is, I had to notice that first incident. Wait, what? Oh, okay, I need to look at you. And then what you do, is you begin to make plans for life without any people like that involved. Fools can exit one by one. It's just like Donald Trump cannot seem to stop himself from getting himself convicted. You know, federal court trials are not televised, but I would pay real money. Pay per view. Y'all want to see me by cable? Pay per view. I would pay real money to watch Donald Trump's statements be used to convict him. 
Because people think they're getting away with stuff and they're going to keep popping off and 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 and convict themselves. As the Bible says, by your words shall you be, uh, by your words shall you be commended and by your words shall you be condemned. Now, the specifics about that is you're either going to confess Jesus Christ as Lord or you're going to deny that fact. And those are the words that are really involved there. But this also works in regular life. Betting people is sometimes a very painful process. And realizing that, to be fair, that people are in different stages of their development. Um, Confidence with Love brought something to my mind, too. And I really had to think about it in terms of the difference between Black women and Black men. As I said, Black women were brought here to solve a problem. And we solved it under duress. The United States has kept its free capital base together until 1865. We solved it for the nation. We were the only people that could. And we kept our communities going and are still keeping them going as much as we can with the men not participating. But the problem, because of the way we're acclimatized, Black women are acclimatized to get things done. This is why companies like Goldman Sachs are still coming out here like we can extend our capital with them. This is why cultures, uh, you know, enter multinational lending organizations like Grameen look at black women in the country like they look at women everywhere else, particularly in Africa comes to mind. Give the money to the women because they will make it work and give us a return. The men will take it and do whatever they do to cope with not being us. That's the setup. When, 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 when you see European and Asian and Jewish men that work with both groups offering money, that's essentially because this has been said. These men are not going to be able to achieve with us, so they will go do whatever they want to do to cope with that fact that we have not, that is not possible for them. So they'll go and do whatever makes them feel comfortable about being a man who is not going to be able to succeed on our level, and they will waste our money doing it. But if we give the money to the women, the women will make sure the children and the elders are okay. Congress with Love talks about this a lot too. We'll make sure the children and the elders are okay. We'll make sure everybody's okay. They will take care of everyone else and we will get a return on our investment. So basically, fools cope, leave evidence of their foolery and get eliminated from consideration over and over and over and over again. And again, this is not all men because there are some men that you could leave them with your last dime. There are some men who are good husbands that you could leave with your whole self and they'll take care of that. These men exist. Is it the majority in a decadent society like ours? No. We talked about the conning and the scamming yesterday and how many men of both races are caught up in the big time American cons of the day. About trying to get back to 1950 and one half of the men who were in that con would be shooting the others in the street. But black men still, certain black men, and maybe as many as 13 to 15 percent, maybe even 20, to tell Dennis Sperling, to hear if, if attorney Dennis Sperling on the ministry is correct, maybe even 20 percent want to go along with this because they think that at least they'll be up over black women again. Is that, that's 20 percent. Number of black men who are felons. So take that 20. Add that to 33 percent who are felons who, because of the Constitution and the way it's set up in the 13th Amendment, do have back to the right of slaves. How much is 20% and 33%? Well, let's take the number down. Let's take the number down to 13%, down to 33%. That's not a majority. That's 43%. The 46. If that number is 15%, that number gets real close to 50 I just want you to think about that for a minute. That's what black women are up against right now. But again, look at those numbers on who voted for Donald Trump. Well, the whole, na- the majority of the nation is up against it. The majority of the nation is a pretty much an even split. About 45% of people are willing to go through whatever, 45 or 45, wow, were willing to do whatever they need to do to have their way to be up over someone else they don't deserve. So what you have to do is just watch this in your real life and just observe people. Foolery foolery can't be hidden for too long. 
in, in, in a proud, attention-seeking culture. We talked about that last week. And so what you need to do is watch and let people convict themselves and exit them from your life. This is, like the Bible says, judgment is God's strange work. He, he's good at it, but he doesn't enjoy it. You know, you're going to put a whole flood on the planet. You're good at it. Don't enjoy it. I remember it says in Genesis 6, the Lord put out a warning. My soul will not always strive with man. It's noticeable that before God did judgment, he gave people about 100 to 120 years warning all the time. Everybody want to talk about how cruel the God of the Old Testament is. Y'all forget Isaiah, Jeremiah. Ezekiel, Daniel, Hosea, Joel, Amos, Obadiah, Jonah, Micah, Nahum, Habakkuk, Zechariah, Zechariah, Haggai, Zechariah, no, Zephaniah, Haggai, Zechariah, Malachi, with a uh, honorable mention, they don't have books, but we know that Samuel, Nathan, Gad, Elijah, Elisha existed. Everybody forgets that God gave all kinds of warnings and told people, get back on point. A hundred years of advanced warning. And people kept on refusing to do it. Everybody won't talk about that. And the same people who talk like that are the same people that want to come into your life and ruin it half the time. And that person, that could also be you. Thinking, it's just, that was a conversation today online about, well, people deserve second chances. And the Bible says to give. The Bible also says to repent and turn from your evil ways and be saved. And that you got to do that too. But in a proud, attention-seeking culture, foolery is loud. Therefore, fools will always out themselves. And I don't use the term fool lightly because you're not supposed to use it lightly. In the biblical sense, a fool is someone who, in light of divine revelation, refuses it and goes on his ungodly way. As if there will be no judgment, no punishment, no consequences. Does that remind you of anybody you see in the public square anywhere? This is why we all, well, if they're not held accountable, they're going to do the same thing. That's right. Now, one of the ways that we hold fools accountable is to exit them out of everything we're doing. This is the other side of what I was talking about when it comes to scammers. Not every fool that you meet is a scammer. Sometimes these are just people who finally just get to think they're big enough and bad enough, bold enough and mean enough, or just dumb enough to show their whole behind. Now, y'all, some of y'all know me. How you think this going to end? Anybody that knows me at all knows when your time is up, your time is up. I have people listening to me right now that know that and found out the hard way. Did I enjoy that? No, but I'm very good at it. Do I go and cry and listen to my favorite bass sing songs about how, uh, you know, you just sit in a room alone and you just feel the darkness closing in because you have lost love and fellowship again? Does it hurt? Do I grieve? Y'all saw me in the spring. Some of y'all know what that was about. I heard as much as all the rest of y'all. So you remember last summer and what I left in, and that hurt me tremendously. But sometimes you got to let the foolery and the fools that want it exit your life. Sometimes you just got to be like, my peace is more important than my profits. My peace is more important with having X number of people around me. My peace is more important in my position. Because I have to be honest, I cannot achieve my goals in the country in the con in the context of foolery. Therefore, they gotta go one by one. One by one, they gotta go. And as, as we become honest when and disciplined with ourselves. See, as black women. Especially for those of you on it. And for black men who are doing the darn thing. Because I know black men who have had to do this too. The culture is toxic on both sides now. I would say not to the same extent. Last time I checked, black women are not killing black men 25 times a day. Nor are they killing each other five times a day. Four and a half to five times. Maybe not to the same extent. Black women are not... Um, 
touching black children inappropriately such that 60% of black girls and maybe 25% of black boys are reaching adulthood. We're not doing the majority of that without, you know, having been touched inappropriately. We're not doing the majority of that. So I would say the toxic, uh, you know, in Yvette Carnell's comments, some, you know, some gentleman who got report, who got uh, reported for promoting terrorism had the temerity to say that Boyce Watkins needs to hire some goons that roll up on Yvette Carnell. He got reported for terroristic behavior. I don't play that, y'all. Um, we're not the ones doing that in general. We're not a, we're not the ones who are rolling up on people for saying things we don't like about somebody who is not even that person. No, 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 that's not us. So there's definitely more toxicity on one side. But all of us need to look at where the foolery is and let the people that want it leave our lives and bolt the door after them. Everybody needs to do it. Because again, for us to achieve our goals, for us to be able to have good things in this society, or Stephanie Perry, Adelia Borshade, Rashida Dow, Access Network, I'm going to keep saying it, for us to even be able to leave the foolery completely, we have to be very honest about the necessity of doing that. Like I said, there's black women in this country like, you know what, I'm leaving all of it. I'm leaving the no good men. I'm leaving the no good corporate system. I'm leaving the entire country. I'm going to go somewhere, but I'm not lying about every day about being less than a human being because I'm a woman because I'm black. No. I'm not going somewhere where no one thinks me less than human because I'm over 35. No. I'm not going somewhere where men like that do not have enough influence, cannot run enough of anything, and even to get run out of the country while black women are not. No. That's how much latitude you have to leave Woodbury alone. And if you're going to get somewhere in life, you got to let the fools who love their foolery exit. I don't spend a lot of time keeping up with what Donald Trump is doing. He exited my life on January 20th, 2021. Do I, you know, keep up with the big things that are going on? Sure. He's important enough to warrant that. But he exited my life on January 21st, 2020. I'm so glad that our president now is so boring that I don't have to hear about him every day saying or doing something dumb. He asked in my life. Uh, he's only back in it because we're, we're, we know, and I'm not sitting around waiting for him to be convicted because that may take a year or more. It may never happen. He's no, he's a non-factor now. Now, if he becomes president, he becomes factor again. If he leads a larger scale inter insurrection, he becomes a faction again. Right now, he's just a, he's just an old man spouting off foolery and getting himself setting himself up to be convicted. The charges that that man has against himself will have him in jail, I think, for four hundred and sixteen years. And when you have done things such that your term in prison will be longer than the entire history of Africans in America in North America, well, Africans in North America. Why is Florida all messed up? It actually started there almost 100 years earlier in 1526. So Africans in French and Anglo-Saxon America, your prison term is going to be longer than that. You looking at Floridian numbers? You're messed up. And you know, uh, the 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 proper English explanation, the proper Afri standard English explanation of you done messed up from African American English, is that you have messed up so bad that you done, you are done. Therefore, you done messed up. <laughs> you done messed up. Because like, if they can get you on twenty percent of that, you're gonna be there eighty years. If they can get you on one percent of it, and you seventy seven years old, you're gonna be there for four. But he's a non factor in my life. He ain't got no power right now. He can whip up a few people online, but that may be, he has about 40 million people that love him, but they can do their death threats and things like that, granted. But um, he himself, not so much. Not so much. His wings have been clipped a little since January 6th. Maybe just a little. Umar Johnson gets on my nerves. Non-factor in my actual life. Anton Daniels infuriates me. 
he's talking about the Holocaust and four to five million black women. Not 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 a non-factor, but also being exposed by other people, which is what, you know, basically it just grifted mad, talking loud, saying nothing. But he's doing it on a Hitlerian level. We give no quarter. Cynthia G already knows. I'm not gonna even put up with anybody who puts up with her. Um, nope, she knows that. We've interacted before. She knows. Adagon Forrest, I put in the hands of the FBI and ADL. Anti-Defamation League. He had the temerity to not only be talking about the Holocaust of all Black women, he also wants to try to do Holocaust on the Jews. He on a watch list somewhere and had his YouTube channel taken down. Someone once said about me, I don't suffer fools gladly. I don't. Because what you do is you get your life into a position where they don't have any impact on it. And you let them go. When you find out the people that you care about are really fools, it is the hardest thing that you will ever deal with. When you find out that people love foolery that you love and will not give it up, it is among the hardest things that you will ever deal with. But if you're honest about your process and where you need to go in your life, you got to let them go. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Y'all have a good day now. Goodbye.